Um, so from my perspective, the makeup of a B2B brand covers social, community engagement with both your, with all your customers, your prospects, your investors, and your employees, the look and feel of how people interact with you, whether that be digitally or in person, the content you create to lead to a category that you want to create or own. Um, and so I'm going to unpack each of these from how we kind of work on it at Zappy, and, um, and then we can we kind of get it to the back end. So social is something that you, you have to do and you have to do well. So we, we look at social from really three lenses. The first is the Zappy brand, which is constantly either creating original content or posting from other people who we respect or repurposing content that, that our staff creates. We look at it from uh, getting our sales reps, our customer success reps, et cetera, behind specific campaigns, um, generating some original thought and then pushing that. Uh, and then the other one is trying to create further thought leadership in our business. So outside of just Steve and myself, but other people in the business who have really great things to say. And so Kate and Sasha on our content marketing team are, are putting a lot of work into driving growth in our social media engagement because it really works. I, I got a great story of this. I was at a conference a couple of weeks ago, actually at this point, it's a couple of months ago, and somebody ran up to me and said, hey, I love your content. How do we do business together? And we closed one, a very big subscription, I think three weeks later. Um, so there is some hope for attribution on brand building. Uh, but you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because it, it is an algorithm game, but it's something you really just have to do to stay top of mind. And it's something we've bet on really hard. So we, we post a lot on social, we test different things. Some of them fail miserably. Some of them are huge successes, but I think it's just the experimentation. And I, I think with social, there's a balance of being polished and, and consistent from an integrated marketing perspective versus just documenting. Uh, and it's a balance I think we're always uh, rightfully having tension on internally of like, what do we need to get perfect versus what do we just want to shoot? So if you follow us on social, you'll know I'm the raw uncut one. And then our, our team does tends to do a good job of making me look better than I am. Um, community engagement is so important. Um, we, we've had the benefit of having a following since the beginning of people who said what they're on to is right. Like we need to think about doing our insights in a better way. And this company's onto something. So we've been really fortunate to have a group of people who have been rooting for us since the beginning. And it wasn't until we brought in Ken who now runs our marketing team and said, Hey man, you're onto something with this group. We just need to formalize it. We need to productize it. So about a year and a half ago, we officially launched Zappy Insiders. And what we do with Zappy Insiders is we put out exclusive content. We throw parties. Uh, so this is actually me in the top right corner um, singing Shania Twain with uh, Amanda from Pfizer, which um, Amanda, I don't think you're listening to this, but I didn't really think it was cool that you made me sing, man, I feel like a woman by myself, but I did it, everybody. It was fun. Um, so we're throwing parties to let people connect and network. We're putting on all day conferences, just like Drift's doing here with this event. Um, we're doing social events off the back of events. And then we're providing uh, a way for our, our users and customers to network with each other. And what's interesting is a lot of that is, is subtly making sure we're not the conversation, but we're the company who's fostering the conversation. And by proxy, that attributes to, oh, Zappy let me talk to another VP of Insights who's struggling with the same thing. Now, one of the balances of, of this community engagement is the balance between the exclusive feeling. So one of the things we always try to do with our insiders community is it's got to be sexy, exclusive, great content, a lot of fun. And, and the quality of attendee is what makes it great. So we, we're tr always trying to find that balance between how do we maintain that essence while getting the numbers up, right? So that's something that I think is a constant um, thing that we're working through. Visual design. Um, I think just the consistency of the look and feel of how you interact with the brand is something that's really important. But also, like, a, we have an amazing design team led by Emma Vasquez, and, and, and Emma's always innovating with different ways to visualize things. And so we're, we're big into animation, we're big into bright colors, and so I think you're starting to see a lot of that. But for me, it's just, I mean, I went to school for marketing, and the consistency was something that was really important. So what, what I'm always looking for is a consistent look and feel from every single touch you get from us, whether it's our web platform, our advertising, our blog, our sales channels, our proposals, what have you. It's really important that the look and feel maintains consistent. And then thought leadership, right? Like you have to have a point of view and get other businesses to share that with you. Um, so we're, we're investing a lot on, on, on either thought leadership around the category or around the customer's life. You've, and this is why I think there's a distinct difference between product marketing um, and brand building. You very rarely hear us 
talk about our product when we're promoting out content. It's, it's a lot more um, around the industry, around the trends, around what the buyers are dealing with um, versus our widgets really cool. By the way, I think our widget's pretty cool, but uh, that's for another day. And then category creation is the next one, right? So if you can own something, own it, but beware, you're going to get a bunch of me too competitors who are going to rip off your messaging and copy you, but don't get upset about that. That's a beautiful thing. You know, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. So a couple of years ago, we said to ourselves, we're going to own insights automation as a category. We bet hard on it. And we did. And so all the search word and unstructured text data that the industry reports would put out would say automation equals zappy or our competitors would, would go on stage and say, we're like Zappy, but, and I thought that was awesome because that's just sort of building up the brand. As, I, as we grow more and more, what we're really doing is helping the world's biggest brands digitize how they do insights. So automation is just how that happens, but the entire process of how they change their job is something we're really focused on. Um, full disclosure, we're launching a big Hero campaign in a couple weeks, and I wish the timing worked out so I could have showed you it, but um, you'll see it come out because it's going to be very linked to this, but it's not going to say digitation, digitization. So what makes up a winning brand, right? So I think you need to have a distinct point of view. It needs to be aspirational and it can't just be like, it can't, you need to find the balance between aspiration and vaporware that doesn't exist. Um, it does take patience because if any of you were trying to build audiences, you know that those algorithms take time. I mean, I've been trying to build an audience on social for years. And I'm just starting to see results from it, right? So it takes patience and it does take buy-in from your board of directors that you're investing in marketing and not all of it's going to be attributable. If, you're, if you have an organization that wants to attribute everything and doesn't believe anything unless it's, unless it's attributable, um, you're probably going to get bought by private equity and you're probably not going to build a world famous brand. Um, and that's fine if your business model is, is okay with that. But brand building takes time and patience. The biggest thing from my perspective, is you need to keep it real. You need to be authentic. So when we do anything, like, so I'll give you an example. Nobody ghostwrites for me. Um, so what I'll do is if I have an idea, I'll talk about it. And we spend a lot of time for our writers to get really good at keeping the essence of me, which is basically a big run-on sentence um, going. Because I, I, keeping it real is a big part of me as a human. And it's a big part of the culture of all 200 plus of my colleagues. Like we we all came here because we didn't want to work for a bureaucratic company. And so for our brand, that's really important. But I would say for any brand, now that doesn't mean you can be a rebel like we are, but it means whatever your culture is, you need to own. So if you're a super conservative risk averse company, don't try to be badass and drop F-bombs on stage because it's going to be hard for you to like own that. Um, I think you need to be everywhere, right? So that, tr that requires you constantly posting, constantly putting out content, testing and learning and making mistakes, but just surrounding the market but you need to do it consistently. Um, we talked about a movement. Uh, I think the other thing from a brand perspective is you need to promote your category and the benefit your category creates, not your product. Product marketing sits somewhere else. Like I said, it's super important. And I think the final point is you've got to get your staff bought in. And that doesn't just mean your marketing team. It means your sales team, your CS team, your executive leadership, your finance team, your engineering team, because they all are important to the fabric of what makes you great. And so I think any great tech company um, is great because of their people um, and their product is great because of their people, right? So, I mean, I'm big into trying to be as product led from a growth perspective as we possibly can be, even though we sell enterprise software, um, but getting buy-in from the entire organization is really important. Because if you think of the different personality types of people who are scrum masters or engineers or revenue analysts versus sales reps versus content marketers, they all are what makes up your company. And so I think that's really important.